She was the dream goddess of <laughs> three billion men nationwide. Yet I ended up taking her home in a drunken blur. I had intended to take responsibility when sober, but to my surprise, she treated me like a gigolo, leaving a tip as if I were just another service rendered. Holding the tip, I arrived at my new job, only to find my heart nearly stopping with shock. My new boss, a stunning and aloof CEO, was none other than the girl from last night clad in black stockings. Here's what happened. That morning, I struggled to open my eyes in a large hotel suite, alone. The gorgeous woman I had met at the bar had vanished. I faintly remembered our final, mutual gaze turning into a kiss. Alcohol truly is treacherous, I muttered as I stretched, feeling sore all over from the night's escapades. That's when I noticed a stack of cash on the nightstand. She hadn't just left after our night together. She had left me $10,000. Was I just a body for sale to her? Though conflicted, I pocketed the money, tidied the bed, and prepared to leave. But as I pulled back the sheets, I was struck by a large, fresh bloodstain on the pristine sheets. My phone vibrated, bringing me back to reality. It was time for my job interview. William sounded stern. What time do you think it is? Why aren't you here yet? I quickly apologized and rushed to the interview at the downtown building. After introducing myself at the interview, a voice, cool yet melodic, asked me about my previous job. When I looked up, my heart skipped a beat. The speaker was none other than the woman from last night. Though no longer in her glamorous attire but in a sharp business suit, her exquisite face was unmistakable. My thoughts scrambled. I stuttered my response. She softened her tone. No need to be nervous, just answer normally. As she spoke, I realized she didn't recognize me. Calming myself, I engaged more confidently in the conversation. She seemed impressed and nodded to the other executives before leaving the room. As she passed by, her familiar perfume stirred my emotions. Left alone with William, I whispered, how did I do? He smiled, you did well. You can start tomorrow. Looking around, I cautiously asked, who was that last manager who questioned me? That's our general manager, Emily, the only daughter of the chairman. Don't be fooled by her looks. She's known as a tyrant in the industry, feared by everyone here. I frowned, remembering the previous night's tenderness, unable to reconcile it with her fearsome reputation. After parting with William and reaching the lobby, I felt the weight of the $10,000 in my pocket. I decided it was right to return it. I approached the reception, asking politely, could I see manager Emily, please? Upstairs in the executive office on the 12th floor, Emily was lying on a massage chair, wincing slightly from pain. Are you okay? Her assistant asked, concerned. It's nothing, Emily murmured. Though her body ached severely, especially around her thighs, thinking to herself, that boy last night was something else. Just then, the office phone rang. After a brief conversation, the assistant informed her, Emily, a person named Charlotte wants to meet you. After a moment's hesitation, Emily responded, let him come up. A few minutes later, I entered the general manager's office. Seated in the chair, Emily asked, what's the matter with you? I was a bit nervous as I looked at Emily, her makeup impeccable and expression stern, and said, it's a personal matter. I paused, glancing at the assistant who was sorting files nearby. Emily, puzzled, inquired, what personal matter? Just tell me. Feeling awkward, I thought, can I really discuss such a private matter in front of someone else? Is that appropriate? I coughed twice and then spoke up, well, about last night, you don't have to pay me, I don't charge. After expressing my unease, I hurriedly took out the 10,000 yuan and carefully placed it on the desk. Upon hearing me mention last night, Emily's heart felt like it was being squeezed. She looked up in disbelief, her mind in turmoil, but her rationality reminded her to stay calm. As a female CEO, she couldn't lose her composure at any time. Assistant, you can leave now, she said, feigning composure. The assistant left the office with a look of shock and confusion. As the door closed, the atmosphere in the room turned extremely awkward. After a moment, Emily slowly stood up, walked over to me and frowned. Was it really you last night? Looking directly into Emily's eyes, I confirmed, yes, it was me. 
The 10,000 yuan you left, I didn't touch it. I'm returning it to you now. Now convinced that I was the man from last night, Emily felt immensely embarrassed. She had been in a haze, losing her senses and letting someone take advantage of her. Emily, are you alright? I asked, seeing her silent. Regaining her composure, Emily said sternly, I understand. Charlotte, do you have anything else? If not, you should leave. No, nothing else. I'll be going then, I replied, about to turn and leave. However, I suddenly remembered something and stopped. Emily, you won't let this affect my job offer, will you? Seeing my anxious expression, Emily couldn't help but smile slightly. Quickly, she regained her CEO's arrogance and said, Don't overthink it. I won't hold this against you. Don't dwell on it. Relieved by Emily's response, I sighed deeply and nodded, Then I won't bother you anymore. Before leaving, I couldn't help but look back at Emily, especially her long, straight legs. The very legs that had clung tightly around my waist last night, causing me to swallow hard. After I left, Emily was stunned for several minutes, her beautiful face growing hotter by the moment. She couldn't believe she had indulged with a stranger while drunk and even more shockingly, with a new employee at her company. Just then, a text message notification sounded. Emily fought the anxiety rising within her and checked her phone. After reading a group chat, she realized her mother had advised her to dress nicely for a family dinner. Without outsiders, why the fuss? Is this another blind date for me? Emily quickly called her cousin Fanny. Fanny, tell me, is it another setup for matchmaking tonight? Yes, sis, how did you know? Hearing this, Emily's anger surged. Is it Andy again? I'm not sure who it is, grandma didn't tell me, Fanny replied. Let's not talk about that now. Fanny, come over. I have something important to discuss. At a western restaurant that afternoon, Emily shared her ordeal from last night to today with Fanny. Jumping up from her seat, Fanny exclaimed, Oh my God, I'm so excited for you. You've been single for 27 years. How does it feel? If it was too rough, you must still be sore, huh? Embarrassed, Emily said, I called you for advice, not this. With a meaningful smile, Fanny suggested, Sis, I have a great idea. Find someone to pretend to be your boyfriend. That way, you can attend the dinner and stop the family from matchmaking. Emily's eyes widened. Is it too late to find a fake boyfriend? But Fanny's smile was radiant. Your one night stand is the perfect fake boyfriend. After having dinner, I headed to a clothing store. Since I had just scored a job at the top real estate firm, I felt it was necessary to snag a couple of sharp suits. Quickly, I picked out a suit. As I stepped out of the fitting room, all the salesgirls in the store were staring at me with starry eyes. Wow, you're so handsome, sir. You're the most handsome customer I've ever seen. I furrowed my brows slightly, a hint of doubt creeping in as I glanced at myself in the mirror. To my surprise, I looked stunning in the suit, went to the cashier and paid. Just then, my phone rang. Seeing an unknown number, I answered politely, Hello? On the other end, a voice spoke, Charlotte, where are you right now? Is this Emily? Even though we just met yesterday, I instantly recognized Emily's voice. Emily continued, Where are you? I need to talk to you. Should I come to the office? I asked. No need. I'll come to you, Emily said. Hearing that Emily wanted to talk to me and was coming to see me herself, I felt a bit nervous. What could my current boss and recent fling want from me? Furrowing my brows in confusion, I asked, Emily, what's up? Emily's voice was gentle but firm. Let's talk in person. Add me on WhatsApp and share your exact location. I hesitated for a moment, then agreed, okay. But before I could finish, Emily hung up to, I copied Emily's number, added her on WhatsApp, and shared my location. 20 minutes later, I got a message from Emily. I'm at the cafe on the third floor. Come over. With a nervous heart, I headed to the cafe, wondering about Emily's intentions all the way. Was she having second thoughts? Did she not want me at the company anymore? Or was it about last night? When I arrived at the cafe, I immediately spotted Emily. After all, she was truly a rare beauty. The male customers in the cafe couldn't help but sneak glances at Emily. Meanwhile, Fanny, sitting across from Emily, was stunned when she saw a handsome guy walk in. 
Sis, is that Charlotte? He's so handsome, she exclaimed. Seeing Fanny's infatuated expression, Emily scoffed, don't forget, you're a married woman now. Turning her head away, Emily squinted her eyes. She couldn't deny that I looked quite handsome in casual attire. She waved at me, and I quickly made my way to her table. Before I could say anything, Emily gestured to the empty seat beside her and introduced me to her cousin, Fanny, saying, this is Charlotte. I politely smiled at Fanny before taking a seat next to Emily. Fanny had a look of utter amazement on her face, like a hungry wolf eyeing its prey. Seeing Fanny still gawking, Emily coughed lightly and then kicked her under the table. Fanny suddenly snapped out of it, realizing she had been acting a bit too forward. She blushed and greeted me, Hi handsome. Hello, I replied with a smile. Fanny couldn't contain her excitement, glancing at Emily and blinking incessantly, a look only women understand, meaning, he's really handsome. I decided to break the ice and asked Emily, what's up? Why did you want to meet? Emily's expression turned slightly red as she said, I want to discuss something with you. A deal actually. If it goes through, I'll compensate you. Her words caught me off guard. A deal and compensation? Wasn't she still interested in another kind of deal like last night? Feeling a bit awkward, I chuckled nervously. Emily, what do you mean by deal? Emily blinked her beautiful eyes and said, I have to attend a family dinner and my parents will use this opportunity to arrange a blind date for me. To avoid that, I want to hire you to pretend to be my boyfriend and accompany me to the dinner. I widened my eyes in disbelief. Emily, you want me to pretend to be your boyfriend? Emily pursed her lips and spoke with a cold tone. Yes, you can consider it. We can negotiate the compensation. How much is your current internship salary? Still trying to process the shock, I replied. It's $6,000. Wow, that's low. I'll pay you $50,000 to pretend to be my boyfriend for a month, Emily said, noticing my silence. Is $50,000 too little for you? She paused, then continued. All right, considering the job isn't easy and my father is sharp in business, let's make it $100,000. What do you think? And don't worry, you won't have to meet my parents too often. I was surprised by Emily's offer. Slowly, I realized she wasn't joking. She really wanted me to pretend to be her boyfriend, and she was offering $100,000 a month. Although the amount was tempting, what intrigued me more was Emily herself. I replied, Emily, if you're serious, I think I can give it a try. Relieved to hear my acceptance, Emily said, that's great. It's settled then. No backing out now, or else I won't have time to find someone else. Confused, I asked, when is the family dinner? Tonight, Emily whispered. Fanny started to smirk mischievously. Are you scared? I was almost shocked to the core. I couldn't believe it. I didn't have enough time to prepare. I would definitely mess it up. Seeing my stunned expression, Emily smiled calmly. It's okay. It's 2 p.m. now, and we'll be back home by 6 p.m. You have four hours to prepare. Let's go buy some suitable clothes for you. With that, Emily grabbed Fanny's hand, and they left. Still feeling dazed, I followed them like a puppet, my mind racing with thoughts. We three headed towards the clothing section, with Fanny being reluctantly pulled along by Emily. She kept glancing back at me. Being a total sucker for a handsome guy, how could she resist looking? Not only did she sneak glances at me, but she also couldn't stop complimenting. Sis, you're amazing. Either you've been single for years, or you've found a real gem. Not only is he handsome, but his physique is also quite tempting. Listening to Fanny's endless praises, Emily couldn't help but pinch her arm hard. However, Fanny didn't stop. In fact, she seemed to get more excited. Sis, I bet you two had a blast last night. I couldn't believe Fanny was openly discussing such intimate matters in public. I thought to myself, I need to watch out for her in the future. I absolutely can't let her get attached to me. As we entered the clothing store, we were greeted by three impeccably dressed customers. The sales assistants warmly welcomed us, offering suggestions and asking which items we liked. Sir, would you like to try this? It suits your style perfectly. I smiled and randomly picked up a piece of clothing, but the next moment, I was stunned. A jacket for $180,000? Madness. Emily, without saying a word, 
pointed at four items in the store. The sales assistants hastily noted down her choices. Ma'am, please wait a moment. I'll bring these items for the gentleman to try on. My intention is to buy everything except those four. Pack up all the size that fit him, Emily instructed. The sales assistants were shocked, their mouths hanging open in disbelief. After a while, they seemed as excited as if they had won the lottery. Certainly, madam, one of them said, then came over to take my measurements. I was still stunned. I hurried to Emily's side. Emily, these clothes are very expensive. How can you spend so much money on me? I'm just your hired fake boyfriend. Seeing my anxious expression, Emily was about to reassure me, but Fanny interrupted first. With her eyes gleaming, she said to me, handsome, don't worry too much. If my sister is willing to spend money on you, let her. She's a female CEO, loaded with cash. You're tall and handsome. You deserve the best brands. After her little speech, Fanny winked at me and then quickly reached up to touch my chest. Internally, I screamed and took a step back, thinking, what kind of flirtatious behavior is this? Emily glared at Fanny. Fanny, stop teasing him. He's not as unserious as you are. But before Emily finished, she regretted it because she knew what joke Fanny was about to make. Sure enough, Fanny couldn't stop laughing. Sis, you and Charlotte are the most serious. You even went straight to bed the first time you met? Emily's face flushed red instantly. She raised her hand as if to playfully hit Fanny, but seeing Emily's genuine anger, Fanny quickly restrained herself. Then, Emily looked at me and whispered, don't mind her. As for those clothes, don't worry about the price. I can afford it. I could only nod and say, all right. After a while, the sales assistant finally packed up all the clothes and said, ma'am, you've bought a total of 38 items. With the discount, the total is $5.6 million. How would you like to pay? Okay, just charge it to my card. Emily took out a card from her bag and handed it to the sales assistant. Standing by, I was shocked to hear that the clothes amounted to $5.6 million. I couldn't believe it. A woman I had just met was spending so much money on clothes for me. Wasn't she hiring me to pretend to be her boyfriend? This seemed more like she was keeping me. Charlotte, put on this suit. You'll wear this to the family dinner tonight, Emily said, before being dragged away eagerly by Fanny. Leaving the store, I could only enter the fitting room point two minutes later, when I walked out of the fitting room. Suddenly, I was met with a bunch of starry-eyed admirers. Just then, a repulsive voice sounded behind me, Charlotte, what are you doing here? It turned out to be my former classmate, Robert, a guy jealous of my looks. Robert walked up to me with his fiance, Ross, by his side, looking smug. This is my fiance, Ross. Robert still had that self-satisfied look on his face. Charlotte, got a girlfriend? Need me to introduce someone for you? I was about to speak, but Robert continued, I heard your family has been pressuring you, but I suggest you lower your standards when finding a partner. Recognize your own limitations. Don't get too caught up in finding a pretty girl. Seeing Robert's smug expression, I just thanked him for his kindness and politely declined his offer to help find a girlfriend. Robert continued, you can't afford even one of these clothes even if you work for a year. What are you doing here? Just then, a sales assistant approached me and said, sir, your clothes are all packed. Here's your receipt. Hearing this, both Robert and his companion were dumbfounded. Charlotte, did you really buy so many clothes here? Are you dating a rich woman now? I replied, to be honest, it's just as you think. I found a girlfriend who's very wealthy. Robert exclaimed, Charlotte, you're still so young. How can you go serve an older woman? It's true that we need money, but we shouldn't sell our bodies. Suddenly, a melodious voice came from behind Robert, Charlotte, we're back. Seeing Emily and Fanny, I felt especially happy. Robert and his girlfriend turned around, both shocked. A stunningly beautiful woman with graceful features and a curvaceous figure was swaying her hips as she walked over. Her appearance made all the women in the mall pale in comparison. I walked over with a smile, took the bag from Emily's hand and said, I bumped into my classmate just now and had a chat with him. Really? Because I vaguely heard someone calling me an old woman. Was it you? Emily's gaze turned cold as she looked at Robert. Robert stood there, thinking, no way. 
This gorgeous woman is Charlotte's girlfriend. She's not an old woman at all. She's a stunning beauty. Fanny, with a disgusted look on her face, said, Stop staring at my sister. And by the way, wasn't it you who called my sister an old woman earlier? Nervously, Robert stammered, I'm sorry, I was just joking with Charlotte. Even though I felt extremely pleased inside, I smiled to ease the tension and said, This is my classmate Robert and his girlfriend. And this is my girlfriend, Emily, and this is Fanny. After introducing them, Robert extended his hand with a smile, wanting to shake hands with Emily. However, Emily didn't shake hands. Instead, she turned to me with a smile and said, Honey, are your clothes all packed? I blurted out, The clothes are all packed. But the next moment, I suddenly felt something was off. Wait, did I hear correctly just now? Did Emily just call me, Honey? I looked at Emily in shock. Emily continued, Since everything's packed, let's go. Honey, when you have time, I want to buy you a few Rolex watches. After saying that, Emily took the initiative to hook my arm and pulled me away. Watching them leave, Robert was furious a few minutes later. A Rolls Royce Phantom drove on the road, filled with Fanny's hearty laughter. Isn't it satisfying, Charlotte? I nodded truthfully, indeed. I've long been fed up with Robert. Then Fanny smirked, Charlotte, have you noticed something? Confused, I asked, what have I noticed? Fanny leaned in and whispered, don't you see? Despite Emily always appearing aloof, she's actually quite adorable. Like just now when she called you honey to help you out. I nodded, you're right. When Emily called me honey just now, it made my heart flutter. At that moment, Emily turned around and said seriously, let's get down to business. Since we're going to pretend to be a couple, we need to get to know each other first. I agreed, yes, we should practice in advance. To avoid being exposed at my house, we need to get used to being a couple. Seeing us engage in a serious conversation, Fanny couldn't help but laugh. Don't worry, you won't be exposed. You've already had deep conversations. Now it's just about getting to know each other's personal information. The atmosphere in the car suddenly changed. Emily and I both showed embarrassed expressions. After learning about each other's family backgrounds, Emily checked the time on her phone. It's 5 p.m. now. Shall we head home? I nervously replied, um, maybe let's not go to your house just yet. Emily frowned, why? Are you not ready yet? I quickly explained, no, it's just that I suddenly remembered something. Although we're pretending to be a couple, this is still my first time meeting your parents. I need to buy some gifts to bring along. Emily nodded, all right, let's go buy them now. 20 minutes later, I walked out of the mall with a bunch of gift boxes. Getting back into the car, Emily exclaimed, what did you buy? Why so many? I chuckled, just some supplements, also a token of appreciation. It's important to observe proper etiquette. Hearing my explanation, Emily felt that I was considerate. But then she had second thoughts. Charlotte seems to know the etiquette of meeting the parents-in-law very well. Maybe he has had experiences visiting his girlfriend's parents before. Seeing Emily suddenly silent, I asked, Emily, do you think the gifts I bought are suitable? Emily coldly replied, they're quite suitable. Seeing how experienced you are in meeting your girlfriend's parents, I feel reassured. Emily's words made me a bit anxious. She was smiling at me just now. Why did she suddenly become so cold? Then Emily said, Charlotte, remember, don't call me by my name in front of my family. I raised an eyebrow and asked, not call you by name, then what should I call you, baby? Emily blushed and said, sure, just call me baby. Also, about the story of our relationship, no matter who asks, we say we just met last week and it was love at first sight. Hearing Emily's words, I was surprised, but I still nodded. A few minutes later, the car slowly pulled into a mansion. Fanny asked, are you nervous? I replied, not really, but my mind is blank right now. Normally, meeting your girlfriend's parents for the first time is nerve wracking, let alone Emily's father, one of the top three tycoons in the financial world. After getting out of the car, Emily instructed, Charlotte, just relax. As long as I'm here, my family won't make things difficult for you. After saying that, Emily poked Fanny's hand Fanny, remember, don't talk nonsense. Fanny patted her chest and said, don't worry, sis and bro-in-law, we're on the same team. 
I'll fully cooperate with you guys. After getting out of the car, I walked to the trunk and opened it to take out the gifts. At that moment, Emily noticed a strange Maybach parked in front of the mansion. Emily got angry and said, looks like they're already here. Fanny also understood and said, that's your blind date's car. Although he's rich and powerful, he's really ugly, and they say his character isn't good. As I took out the gifts, I looked at Emily standing in front of me and suddenly had a whimsical idea. I thought it might be a good idea to take a video to show my mom, who's been nagging me to get married. So I quickly took out my phone, first filming the gifts in my hand, then turning the camera towards Emily. After filming, I sent the video to our family group chat. Emily just smiled and said to me, let's go, hurry up, then she took my hand. It reminded me of last night, her hands left quite a few bruises on my back. At this moment, Fanny said, you two look really good together. If you have a baby in the future, they'll definitely be super attractive. Emily skillfully opened the door of the mansion's hall. The lively chatter in the living room instantly came into our ears. Hey, folks, I'm back. Emily exclaimed as we entered the bustling living room, her hand intertwined with mine. The room fell into a sudden silence upon hearing Emily's voice. Everyone, except for Emily and Fanny, noticed a stranger with Emily, their arms linked, looking rather close. Instantly, the expressions of everyone in the room changed. They had already sensed something unusual about Emily's behavior. It seemed like Emily was rebelling against this arranged date with her actions. At tea that moment, Emily's grandma chimed in with a warm smile. My precious granddaughters are back. Come, sit by grandma. Fanny giggled and darted over to sit beside her grandma, and Emily led me by the hand to join them. Grandma squinted at me with curiosity. Emily, who's this young man? Emily cast an adoring glance at me and replied happily, let me introduce you all. This is my boyfriend, Charlotte. Emily then went on to introduce her family members, including her dad's friend, Uncle Peter, and his son, Carl. I politely smiled and nodded at everyone in turn. After the introductions, I placed the gifts I was carrying on the coffee table, thinking I did okay. But to my surprise, nobody paid me any attention. Everyone's faces stiffened, and not a word was spoken, except for Emily's grandma, who had a kind smile on her face. Very good. This young man seems responsible and handsome. Emily has good taste. I'm pleased. Turning to Emily's parents, she asked, Gloria, Bill, what do you think? You know, in this family, grandma's word is law. Upon hearing grandma's question, Emily's mother, Gloria, quickly nodded in agreement. Mom, you're absolutely right. I also think he's a good catch. Gloria always respects and abides by grandma's decisions, especially when it comes to matters of aesthetics. They both fancy good-looking boys. Meanwhile, Bill, Emily's dad, forced a smile as he addressed his mother. Mom, you're spot on. But Emily's marriage requires extra caution. Then, Bill turned to Emily and asked, Is he really your boyfriend, Em? Why didn't you tell me about him? Emily relaxed into her grandmother's embrace, feeling a sense of security. However, she spoke up, Dad, I didn't get the chance to tell you yet. I only met Charlotte last week. Bill's expression soured immediately, and he exclaimed, Just last week? Emily, you can't just find yourself a random boyfriend like that. Emily felt a surge of annoyance at hearing this, but she tried to keep her emotions steady as she retorted, Dad, being with him isn't some reckless act. We fell for each other at first sight. Love doesn't care about how long you've known someone. Emily's words managed to irk Peter. Since Emily walked in with me, Peter had felt a level of insult he hadn't experienced before. He stood up and addressed Bill, Bill, do you genuinely not know about your daughter already being in a relationship, or are you pretending not to know? Bill also stood up, brother, when it comes to our children's marriage, I wouldn't intentionally deceive you. I genuinely didn't know about this, but I admit, we handled this poorly. Seeing the tension in the room, Emily's grandmother intervened, Peter, tonight's mishap is on us. I apologize to you. Young people's love has always been a matter of choice. We can only say that my granddaughter and your son aren't meant to be. Peter's anger subsided a bit upon hearing grandma's words. 
After a moment of contemplation, he realized he couldn't let this incident ruin the relationship between the two families. Aunt, you're right. Although our families won't be connected through marriage, we still have years of friendship. All right, we won't disturb your family dinner any longer. With that, Peter led his son Carl towards the door. At tea that moment, Carl still had wide eyes. Emily, are you really with him? Are you just playing around or serious? Emily countered, Carl, you've got it wrong. Of course, I hope to marry Charlotte. Emily leaned into me as she spoke. I instinctively wrapped an arm around Emily's shoulder and said, Emily, I'm serious about you too. Carl grew even angrier. After one last glance at Emily, he swiftly followed his father out. Bill followed Peter out to see them off then. The old lady tapped her cane and said, Children, enough fuss. There's no one else here now. Let's all come together for dinner. Emily and I walked hand in hand behind the others. During this time, my phone kept buzzing in my pocket. I pulled out my phone and didn't even need to unlock it to know. The series of message notifications must be from the family chat group. Sure enough, as I looked at the messages praising me endlessly, my heart swelled with joy. Finally, no one would nag me about getting married anymore. Theo further gained my family's trust. I recorded another video and sent it to the group chat before slipping my phone back into my pocket. Little did I know, this action would lead to immense trouble. Everyone, let's sit down and eat, Emily's grandmother said, breaking the silence as we all gathered around the dining table. As Emily's mom, Gloria, relayed a message from Bill about some urgent matters at the branch office, my ears perked up. She leaned in close to her mother, her voice barely audible to me across the long table. Though I couldn't catch her words, I sensed they were directed at me, the outsider in this family. It's all right if he won't be back tonight, let's eat, Emily's grandmother said, dismissing the news about Bill's sudden departure. Throughout the meal, Emily's family stole glances at me, sizing me up. Despite Gloria's initial surprise at her daughter's unexpected boyfriend, my tall and handsome appearance seemed to leave a positive impression. Then Gloria turned her attention to me, firing off questions about my age, occupation, and residence. Auntie, I'm 27, working as an accountant in a real estate firm, and I live on the west side of town, I replied politely, setting down my utensils. Before I could resume eating, Gloria inquired, So, how did you and Emily meet? I smoothly recited the rehearsed lines. After dinner, as the family gathered around the coffee table, chatting, Fanny's family bid their farewells and left. Glancing at the time on my phone, I realized it was already 9 p.m. I exchanged a look with Emily, signaling it was time to leave. Mom, Grandma, it's getting late. Charlotte and I will head back now. You both should rest early, Emily announced, ready to pull me up from my chair. But Grandma furrowed her brows. Emily, think about it. How long has it been since you last visited? You're always busy with work. Emily understood her grandmother's implication immediately. All right, I'll stay tonight then, she agreed before turning to me. Charlotte, you go back on your own. I'll have the driver drop you off. I nodded and stood up, bidding farewell to Emily's mom and grandma. Grandma frowned again. Charlotte, it wouldn't make me happy if you leave like this. Are you implying our house is too small for you? I quickly shook my head. No, Grandma, not at all. With a wave of her hand, Grandma insisted, you'll stay here tonight, just like Emily. I was taken aback. Wasn't this supposed to be just a casual visit? Our plan to pose as a couple to fend off matchmaking pressures had taken an unexpected turn. Thank you for your kindness, Grandma. I'll visit more often, but I have work early tomorrow, so I better not stay tonight. Grandma couldn't wait to speak up, my future son-in-law, don't be shy. You and Emily can stay overnight. You can go to work in the morning. With that, she instructed the servants to prepare the guest room. I wanted to protest but grandma's stern gaze intimidated me. An hour later, the entire mansion fell silent. After a shower, I sat on the couch, reflecting on the bizarre events of the past couple of days. It felt like a surreal dream. Before bed, I habitually checked my phone, quickly replying to messages from the family group chat. I had a feeling if I didn't respond soon, my mom would call. After answering everyone's questions, I thought I handled it perfectly. But then my mom's next message nearly made me faint. 
She wanted me to bring Emily home for dinner tomorrow night. We had just met her parents. How could I bring her to my place so soon? A sudden knock interrupted my thoughts. I hastily put down my phone and opened the door, startled to see Grandma standing there. Instinctively, I adjusted my bathrobe. Grandma, it's late. Shouldn't you be asleep? I greeted her, stepping aside to let her in. Leaning on her cane, Grandma smiled. I don't need to sleep early. I enjoy staying up late. Besides, I'm not tired yet. Then she glanced at the servant behind her, who brought in a pot of soup. This is a special calming soup I had made for you. Drink it before bed. It will help you sleep and nourish your body, Grandma said. Thank you, Grandma, I replied gratefully. Back in my room, I sat on the couch, chatting in the group chat while sipping the soup. Ten minutes later, I still couldn't convince my parents, so I reluctantly agreed to bring Emily home tomorrow. I patted my stomach contentedly. Grandma's soup was not only delicious but also nourishing. I felt warm all over. Out of curiosity, I stirred the soup with the spoon. When I saw the ingredients at the bottom, I was shocked. It was all aphrodisiacs and tonics for male vitality. If I drank a bowl of this, even the door lock wouldn't be safe. Suddenly, my whole body started heating up and I could feel the effects of the medicine kicking in. I quickly got up and opened the window, standing there to cool off, taking deep breaths to calm myself down. It's he the sound of another knock on the door, I hesitated. But considering I was in someone else's house, I couldn't ignore it. I tightened my bathrobe and opened the door, only to find Emily standing there. She quickly stepped in and shut the door behind her. Emily, shivering in her thin attire, asked, Charlotte, why did you open all the windows on such a cold day? I rushed to the window, closing it again. I just finished showering and felt a bit hot, I explained. Emily observed me closely. What's wrong with you? Your face and neck are so red. Are you running a fever? She reached out to feel my forehead, and despite my attempt to dodge, her touch only made me feel hotter. Oh my goodness, you're burning up. You must be sick. Wait here, I'll call my private doctor, Emily panicked, reaching for her phone. I quickly stopped her. No need. I always run a bit hot after showering. It'll cool down on its own. Emily looked skeptical. I've never heard of that before. It's so strange. She circled around me, growing increasingly suspicious of my condition. Feeling uneasy, I just wanted Emily out of the room. Every moment with her here felt torturous, especially with her wearing that nightgown after a bath. Making me constantly swallow nervously I in a chilly tone, I asked, what's the matter for you to come to my room? But Emily showed no intention of leaving. Instead, she sat down on the couch. Her presence made me even more uncomfortable, and my emotions became increasingly unstable. I didn't want to disturb your sleep, but I can't sleep myself. So, I thought I'd come and talk to you about my grandma's matchmaking pressure, Emily said sweetly. Listening to her melodic voice, I couldn't maintain the composure I had during the day. I felt on the brink of losing control. Quickly turning away to avoid revealing my embarrassment to Emily, I muttered, I'm not feeling well. I have a headache. I think I'll go to bed early. Emily walked towards me, saying, Charlotte, what's wrong with you? I'm talking to you. Why are you so absent-minded and even turned your back? Do you know it's rude? Feeling utterly embarrassed, I stood there, unable to muster the courage to face Emily. My situation downstairs was already quite a spectacle. All I could say was, um, I'm just not feeling well. My head hurts a bit. I think I need to rest early. Emily approached me, scrutinizing me with a serious expression. Charlotte, are you unhappy with my family? Just tell me what you're thinking. Clearing my dry throat, I turned my face away and said, I'm not unhappy. I'm just feeling really unwell. It's uncomfortable. Quickly, I discreetly covered my bottom area with my hand. With a tilt of her head and a glance at my hand, Emily couldn't help but ask, What's wrong with you? You were fine and cheerful during dinner. How come you've changed after taking a shower? Are you pretending to be sick to avoid continuing our pretend relationship? Taking a deep breath, I sighed heavily. Let me be honest with you. I'm not dissatisfied with your family. I just feel really unwell. About 15 minutes ago, your grandma came by and brought me a pot of calming soup. 
Emily nodded. Yeah, I heard grandma came. I thought she was just checking on you. I didn't know she cared so much to bring you soup. Continuing, I said, your grandma really seems to like me. But do you know what kind of soup she brought? You'd never guess. What? Isn't it calming soup? Emily asked. I licked my parched, feverish lips before replying. The soup she brought was a tonic for male vitality. It made me feel even worse. Listening to my explanation, Emily bit her lip in disbelief. Is what you're saying true? Taking a couple of steps back to keep my distance from Emily, I continued. If you don't believe me, go check for yourself. Emily approached the coffee table, full of doubts. After inspecting the ingredients in the pot, her eyes widened in shock. Feeling my discomfort intensify, as if every breath I took could breathe out fire, I pleaded, Emily, please leave. I'm afraid I might lose control and do something to you. Seeing my agonized state, Emily hurried over. Charlotte, don't be afraid. I'll call a doctor right away. I wiped the sweat off my forehead and said, don't call a doctor. Even if they come, it'll take time for me to recover on my own. I grabbed a glass of cold water from the table and drank it, feeling some relief as the fire within me subsided slightly. Emily, your grandma probably wants you to conceive soon so that we can get married quickly. Emily nodded in agreement. You're right. I just remembered, my grandma slept with my grandpa the first time she met him. Thinking for a moment, I proposed, so, why don't we make everyone believe that something did happen between us tonight? Then, they'll think you'll get pregnant soon, and we can have some time without being pressured into marriage. Emily chuckled, but soon her expression turned uneasy. Charlotte, are you suggesting that I stay here overnight? I nodded, confirming, yes, tonight you'll stay in my room. Emily hesitated, casting a glance at me before finally speaking, you're right, but I'm afraid. I pulled out some tissues, wiping away the sweat on my body. Afraid of what? I asked. Glancing at my lower half, Emily said, I'm afraid you won't be able to control yourself and do something rude to me again. Frustrated, I shook my head. I'll take a cold shower now to cool down, I said before rushing into the bathroom. Emily lay down on the couch, listening to the sound of water from the bathroom, gradually feeling drowsy point 20 minutes later, the bathroom door opened, and I emerged feeling much better. Emily, I'm fine now, I said. However, Emily was already asleep on the couch. Quietly, I approached the bed, gently covering Emily with a blanket, then laid down myself. The next morning, a knock on the door broke the silence of the room. In a daze, Emily mumbled, come in. Gloria entered, and the next moment she screamed, there's no one in your room. She's indeed in Charlotte's room. Hearing Gloria's scream, Emily instantly woke up, rubbing her eyes. Mom, what are you saying? Who's in Charlotte's room? It's not me. As Emily finished speaking, she suddenly realized that she seemed to have slept with me. Instantly embarrassed, she quickly pushed me hard, saying, Charlotte, wake up, don't sleep. Still half asleep, I struggled to open my eyes and said, what's up? I'm still sleepy. Emily continued shaking me. Charlotte, my mom is here. Wake up. In a daze, I lifted my head and glanced towards the door. The next moment, I fully awakened, looking at Emily beside me. She had slept on the couch last night, so how did she end up on the bed now? Gloria said, both of you, get up now. It's already eight o'clock, and after breakfast, you still have to go to work. With that, she left the room. Emily and I remained silent for a few seconds. Then, Emily jumped off the bed and hurried towards the door. I sat on the bed, then began to explain. I don't know how you ended up on the bed. I didn't touch you. When I fell asleep, you were already on the couch. Hearing my explanation, Emily stopped in her tracks and turned to me. You don't need to explain. I know you didn't do anything. It must have been me sleepwalking. I widened my eyes in disbelief. After breakfast, the driver took us to work. Sitting in the car, I sighed and said, Emily, how did I do at your house? Emily didn't turn back. She simply replied, not bad, keep it up. Her tone was chilly that I retorted. You got into character and out of character faster than I did. Emily put her fair finger to her lips, signaling for silence. Stop talking. 
I didn't sleep well last night, and now I need to catch up on sleep. I wisely closed my mouth. 89 o'clock, we arrived at the real estate group's building. Emily got out first and asked the driver to let me out a bit further down the street. A few minutes later, with my briefcase in hand, I confidently entered the company. I took the elevator straight to the eighth floor, where the finance department was located. As soon as I stepped out of the elevator, my boss, William, hurried over. Charlotte, you're late for the interview, and now you're late for work. Today is your first day, he said with a hint of annoyance. I awkwardly smiled and replied, sorry, traffic was heavy. William, still irritated, assigned me a workstation and tasks for the day. The morning passed quickly, and after lunch, I sat at my desk, reviewing the tasks for the afternoon. Suddenly, my phone, placed on the desk, began to vibrate incessantly. I picked it up and saw it was a call from my MOM. As soon as I answered, my mom's loud voice came through, look at the family chat. Your dad and I have been talking to you so much, but you never reply. I quickly reassured her, mom, let me explain. It's my first day at work, and I've been really busy with tasks. I didn't have time to check my phone. On the other end of the line, my mom said, work is important, but getting married is more important. We have more than enough money. As long as you get married soon, we can support you and your wife. Listening to my mom's tone, one would think I was some wealthy heir. Mom, do you really think I wouldn't know if we're tight on cash? If I didn't work, I'd end up wandering the streets. But my mom impatiently chuckled, then changed the subject, saying, ask your wife's taste right now. Ask her what she likes to eat. My mom's words totally threw me off, just as I was about to come up with an excuse to explain. Then my mom said, you immediately add my daughter-in-law to our family chat group, so I can talk to her directly. Okay, that's it. Hurry up and add my daughter-in-law to the group. In the next second, the phone hung up. What was I supposed to do? Bringing my girlfriend home wasn't something I had discussed with Emily yet. I couldn't focus on work anymore. Finally, I mustered the courage and sent Emily a message. Emily, are you busy? I need to talk to you urgently. A few seconds later, Emily replied, what's up? Come up and tell me. Then, I took the elevator to the CEO's office. Once I got to the CEO's office, Emily looked up from a pile of office documents and asked, what's up? I awkwardly said, it's about my family pressuring me to get married. You're temporarily okay now, but my mom just called and urged me to bring my girlfriend home for dinner tonight, and it has to be tonight. Emily instantly sat up straight. Seeing Emily's surprised expression, I quickly said, don't worry, I know you definitely won't agree to come home with me. I want to discuss something with you. Can you join my family chat group for a bit? Otherwise, my mom will go crazy calling me. After thinking for a moment, Emily calmly said, okay. I eagerly added Emily to the chat group and said, my parents, aunt, uncle, and cousin are in the group. They probably have hundreds of questions waiting for you. Emily nonchalantly picked up her phone and said impatiently, you don't need to explain so much. If there's nothing else, get back to work quickly. I immediately restrained my smile and said, okay, I'll go back now. Back at my desk, I thought about quickly typing an introduction for Emily, but unexpectedly, Emily spoke first, hi everyone, I'm Charlotte's girlfriend, Emily. After Emily spoke, the chat group was filled with welcoming messages, welcome to our precious daughter-in-law, oh my, my nephew is finally bringing his girlfriend home. Sister-in-law is so beautiful, way more gorgeous than TV stars. Seeing the messages in the chat group, a smile unconsciously appeared on Emily's lips. Then, she casually clicked on the picture sent in the group and widened her eyes the next second. IT was a table full of delicious food, and Emily couldn't help but swallow. Then Emily thought, I should come up with some excuse to refuse my family's generous invitation. But as she was about to send the message, something in the chat group made her change her mind. My daughter-in-law, don't be shy. Just tell us what you like to eat, and from now on, we'll cook according to Emily's taste. Emily is like our own daughter. My mom said. Reading this, Emily felt deeply touched. Her eyes were a bit moist as she said, thank you, uncle and aunt. Charlotte and I will come home for dinner after work. I love everything. Seeing Emily's words, I was stunned. I went back to the chat with Emily and asked, Emily, are you really going to have dinner at my house? Emily quickly replied, 
Of course, everything you said is fine. Seeing Emily's response, I breathed a sigh of relief. At 5.30 p.m., I clocked out of work and walked a bit before getting into Emily's car. Sorry for keeping you waiting, Emily. Emily sat in the driver's seat and said, Your address, I'll navigate. Then the two of us drove to the west side of the city, to my home. As soon as we opened the car door, my parents came up to us, saying, This must be Emily, so beautiful, just like an angel. My mom Carol held Emily's hand, her eyes full of love. Emily smiled shyly, Auntie, you're beautiful too, with such grace. Hearing this, Carol instantly lit up a tea that moment. My dad, Scott, also greeted Emily to come inside. Emily, are you hungry? Come on in and eat. Emily turned to my dad and smiled. Sure, uncle. I've heard Charlotte say that you're an amazing cook. I'm lucky today. Scott kept smiling happily. Emily's fondness was evident. Once in the dining room, Emily couldn't help but exclaim, Wow, uncle, did you cook all these dishes? Just the smell is making me drool. Scott laughed heartily, showing his gums, and quickly introduced the dishes he made to Emily. Carol sat beside Emily, constantly pushing delicious dishes toward her bowl. And on the large dining table, there wasn't a single dish in front of me. After eating and drinking their fill, Emily smiled contentedly. Carol, with a smile on her face, asked, How was it, Emily? Are you full? Emily nodded heavily. I'm full, auntie. I've never eaten so much at night before. I'm definitely going to gain weight. Carol couldn't help but hold Emily's hand. Emily, you're so thin now. Annie feels sorry for you. Emily felt touched once again, smiling. Auntie, I understand. Don't worry. At that moment, Emily realized she was genuinely smiling from the heart. Although she had only been at my house for an hour, during that hour, she received a lot of care and love from my parents. This made her experience for the first time what it felt like to be someone else's daughter-in-law. She wished she could continue living in Charlotte's home forever. Would I really marry Charlotte in the future? But I'm a cold and serious female CEO.